Welcome to the TAF Hub. This is a brand new show brought to you by TAF Africa Global to educate you on real estate business and all the information you need to know about real estate. After 45 years of construction and real estate development in eight African countries, it is time to share my experience and it can only be done in the TAF Hub. We will be inviting experts who will give you facts and the right regulations on real estate development. Join us every week on our social media platforms for an exciting show. You can also watch us on JRTS TV every Sunday at 8.30 p.m. Welcome back on the Tough Hub. My name is Maria Makuli and today I have Mr. Mustafa Jai uh, of Tough Africa Global and we are still on uh, the run through of Tough Africa Global over the past few years, what projects they've been working on, what partnerships they have signed and more exciting updates on Tough City as well. Well, from the previous episode, if you have watched it, Already it will give you an insight of all the exciting things that they've been doing, but there's more. And Mr. Njai, it's good to have you back on the TAF, uh, TAF Hub to continue more updates on what TAF Africa is doing and of course the projects and partnerships you've been signing. How are you today? I'm fine, thank you, Mariama, and uh, thank you um, uh, for this opportunity to mm -hmm. um, share my views and give out yes. facts about TAF Africa Global. Mm -hmm. Now, on the last episode, we did talk about uh, the new project in Sierra Leone and um, about to build 5,000 homes as well in Sierra Leone. Now, will this partnership also include Gambians to work? Just like what's happening here with the tough city, we have a lot of Nigerians and so many mixed nationalities working for this project. Is, are we expecting the same with the Sierra Leone project? Yeah, let, let, Madam, let, let me tell you something about uh, my honest belief and um, uh, my vision about um, capacity building and human resources. Mm -hmm. uh, tough Africa Global is a pan-African company. Mm -hmm. And I take my inspiration from the founder of EcoBank, who is yeah. also one of the founders of, of A-Sky, mm -hmm. which are two successful uh, companies in different um, uh, um, industries. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is um, uh, Mr. Kofi Jondo. He's, he's a Togolese. Yeah. He's quite of age now. But I think as Africans in business, we need to take lessons from him. Mm -hmm. When they set up EcoBank, uh, it was set up in Togo. That's why they have their headquarters there. Mm -hmm. It was meant to be Pan-African. And um, EcoBank today is owned by different Africans yeah. and employ people of you know, different African countries mm -hmm. and even and beyond. Mm -hmm. So um, that's my vision for Tap Africa Global. Mm -hmm. The Tap Africa Global, yes, was born and registered in the Gambia, mm -hmm. but I employ Africans. I give priority to Africans. Mm -hmm. So what is important is to have knowledge on whatever you are doing, be competent, be efficient, mm -hmm. and be able to compete. If you can do that, yeah. uh, then you stand a chance of being employed by Tough Africa Global. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why we have mixed nationalities. We don't ask for your nationality yeah. when we employ you. We, we focus on your knowledge mm -hmm. to, be, to perform, on your competence. I mean, after you've had the knowledge, are you competent enough to deliver what you are tasked to do? So again, Citing an example of EcoBank, yeah. if you go to Sierra Leone, EcoBank Sierra Leone is headed by a Gambian, mm -hmm. Madam Aina Wright. Mm -hmm. Vista Bank is headed by a Gambian, mm -hmm. Mr. Usman Jai. There are Gambians who are competing in other areas. So just yes. a word of caution. Mm -hmm. This issue of nationality, oh no, you, you, know, you should employ Gambians. Yeah. Yes, if I have Gambians who are competent, they will be employed as we do now. You know, we have taken Gambians to Nigeria because we went in there and uh, despite the fact that Nigeria was so big, we had a challenge in employing the numbers that we wanted. Yes. So a combination of Gambians and Senegalese who had performed in our projects in the Gambia were taken to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And we never had issues with Nigerians complaining. Mm -hmm. So when we came back to Gambia, mm -hmm. There were some Nigerians 
who had worked with us already in Nigeria, who were trained, who were competent, and were willing to come over. So some of them were brought here. Mm -hmm. As we are going to Sierra Leone, we will again look at Sierra Leoneans. If we have Sierra Leoneans who are competent, they will be employed, but a mixture of different nationalities. And I think this is what the African Union is asking for. Yeah. I mean, uh, not only in employment and also ECOWAS. ECOWAS says the free, free movement of people and goods. Yes. So actually, there are protocols that allows you, that gives you the right <coughs> to work in any ECOWAS country mm -hmm. if you are coming up from ECOWAS. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing at the African Union level, I'm sure there are protocols that gives you, again, the right to work there. Yeah. So I, I would like to send a message to those Gambians who are watching mm -hmm. that the key word here is knowledge. Make sure that you can compete at every level. Mm -hmm. After that, you should be, you should be competent. Yes. That you are, if you're given the job, you should deliver. Because when we build our products, we don't build the products and identify it with nationalities. Mm -hmm. You, a Gambian doesn't buy a house because it was built by Gambians. Yeah, yeah. A Gambian buys a house that is properly built. Mm -hmm. The standards that are agreed upon must be delivered. Mm -hmm. So regardless of who builds it, mm -hmm. what their focus is on is value for money. Yeah. So um, the answer is that we are Pan-African. I would like to have a mix of Africans mm -hmm. working for Tough Africa Global mm -hmm. because we want to be in every African country. And even the exposure alone is good because, you know, I'm not saying Gambians don't travel, but also I think it's, it's a good opportunity for Gambians to work in different environments, for them to see how it is done and how other people are doing the work as well. And this really helps young people when they come back home to even want to do better and also to step up their game and say, look, when I went to this particular country, I saw them work extra hours and do this and do that. And you know, you're able to also coach and train other people who are underground here. So I think it is needed. And talking about the Pan-Africanness in you, uh, you did live in Nigeria uh, for, a, for a long time. Uh, can you tell us about this experience and how it differs from the Gambia? Um, living in Nigeria is mixed. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the cultural bit, you know, the social, mm -hmm. uh, business, you know, uh, it's a bit different. Uh, but I adjust very fast yes. and um, fast track um, when I leave there to now, uh, I would say Nigeria is a second home. I'm very comfortable in Nigeria. Wow. Um, in Nigeria, what I found out, uh, one thing that I was very comfortable with was that the issue of discriminating you based on nationality doesn't exist in Nigeria. Hmm. I was ac accepted for who I am and what I can deliver. Mm -hmm. I have never been identified as a Gambian, you know, and not to be given the project. Yeah. Yes, I will be identified, oh yes, there's a Gambian who is executing this project. But when Nigerians come to see me, mm -hmm. they see me as somebody that has the capacity to build a project like that, and they will be subdued mm -hmm. because they want to have business from me and they give me all the most deserve respect yes. um, um, uh, to me. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, living there, that was from the business, business side of it. There are certain things I really love about Nigerians because Nigerians don't give up. Nigerians mm -hmm. are go-getters. Yes. You know, they're very aggressive. Mm -hmm. You know, I have good examples about Nigerians. A plumber will come and see you, for example, mm -hmm. that, yes, um, I'm looking for a plumbing contract. So you tell them, oh, no, 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 you look, I've, I've given the plumbing contract already. Mm -hmm. And they will say, okay, but how about the electrical? <laughs> so I will answer, but uh, you, you, you are a plumber. Yeah. <laughs> but how, say, yeah, but my cousin or my friend is an electrical contractor. <laughs> so you see, what the next thing he will do, he will go and introduce that guy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one way or the other, he will benefit. Mm -hmm. That's one thing I learned in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Very accommodating. There's the negative side of it. Mm -hmm. because it's a big country. Mm -hmm. But I quickly learned how to maneuver because security was an issue in the Niger Delta, mm -hmm. especially in Port Harcourt. So my security was being handled by the state. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, my vehicle, obviously, because of the danger in there, yes. was an armored vehicle that I, I had to be, drive. Mm -hmm. And I limited my movements around the, the, the city. Yeah. 
Um, um, so that you have to be very security concerned at my level. Mm -hmm. You obviously you have armed guards all the time with you. Yeah. Um, apart from that, socially, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. You know, as you know me, I like events and, yes. and so on. So, <laughs> in, in the south south, you know, things like burials when somebody elderly passes away, yeah. it's a whole party, man, and I love it. Very colorful. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, very colorful parties. Mm -hmm. So I enjoy that bit of it. The only thing is I enjoy the Nigerian food. I was going to ask, you're yeah. Nigerian. Yeah, yeah. You know, you're yeah, but Nigerian and you go to a new country. Oh, Nigerian food <laughs> is nice. Uh, very delicious. Um, uh, they call it swallow, what you will call fufu here. Yes. They call it swallow. Mm -hmm. And uh, specifically the eba, the pounded yam, samovita <laughs> and so on. I adjusted very fast. Yes. You know, I love their soups. Mm. And, and, and it's lovely. I mean, mm -hmm. Nigeria is home for me. I still have a business there. Mm -hmm. Um, I've had, I've learned a lot from Nigeria too, mm -hmm. and I've, I've had good friends, excellent friends. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had our experience. There's some few negative bits, but at the end of the day, yeah. we delivered the project. That's what that is most important. Mm -hmm. So what we have done in Nigeria with Riftaf, mm -hmm. that is that it is a successful public-private partnership project. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, in Nigeria, most of the time, and in some African countries, hardly would you see. Such, pro such projects being realized. Yes. But a project of that magnitude and mm -hmm. all its challenges, I was happy that we had the right atmosphere um, uh, the, for us to do business, especially mm -hmm. with the state. Mm -hmm. So I am happy that it was done. Yeah. We've learned a lot from there. Mm -hmm. And that gave birth to some of the things we are, give, we are doing here mm -hmm. and Sierra Leone and other countries. Mm -hmm. Now, I first have to say congratulations on the sold out of Riftaf uh, Golf Estate in Nigeria. It has totally sold out. So yeah. that's, a, that's a big, big step ahead. And congratulations to you and your entire Thank team. You. Now, does that mean uh, the Nigerians have taken over the management of the estate entirely? Or are you still in charge? No, I'm not in charge. For, my, for me... Um, when I developed my estates, um, I hand it over to the residents. Mm -hmm. That's what I have been doing until now. Okay. Tough City is different. Mm -hmm. Tough City, we are going to manage it mm -hmm. because of experiences, bad experiences we've ha we have had. Okay. But in Nigeria, the Rift of Gulf Estate, we handed over the facilities management mm -hmm. to uh, the residents themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, they have an organization, an executive that is elected. You know, they have all their constitution done and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's called MACOM. So people contribute. Mm -hmm. There are big funds that are managed. Yes. And they, they manage the estate. They run the affairs of the estate. Mm -hmm. But obviously with our, with our assistance, for example, we still own the clubhouse. We have some few things that we do there. Mm -hmm. So we're still part of it. But to answer your question, the management, the daily management of the estate is being done by the residents. Okay. And the responsibility is given to an elected body called MACOM, mm -hmm. who will who supervises everything. I think we should do a visit to uh, the Rift Taf in Nigeria, you know, for the Taf Hub, so people would see how the estate is and how people are living there and some of the feedbacks they have. Do you have any plans of that? Ah, <laughs> so so one, then you will fly to Nigeria. We fly to Maria, Maria Makoli. Yes. And I'm sure my management team who are off camera, you know, Anita... And Balde, Abyss, Balde, <laughs> others will love to do it. Yeah, why not? Why not? We'll try and work out something probably yes. in the, during the year. Mm -hmm. Just to go back, flashback. Of course. Uh, look at um, uh, um, Rift Taf mm -hmm. uh, 12 years after. Because I, I started, around, I went in about 2011. Mm -hmm. And now we're in 2023. Yeah. 12 years after stepping foot, mm -hmm. you know, on uh, Port Harcourt grounds. Mm -hmm what the place looked like of course. before and after. Before and after. And yeah. we're calling on sponsors to sponsor our <laughs> flight ticket. <laughs> no. Air, Air, Air Nigeria, you come on board. <laughs> no problem. Yes, but oh, yes. so you did mention that, you know, you've handed over and they're uh, managing the estate at the, um, rough, at the Rift Taf. Um, why is it not the same in Gambia, you know, with the other projects that you've worked on before? I personally think uh, that um, uh, there is a lot of um, improvement that needs to be done on taking up responsibilities as homeowners. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason probably is because um, living in estates is new in this country. Yes. 
actually the estates, the gated estates mm -hmm. being developed was started by us. Mm -hmm. So it's quite new. So um, um, residents in general mm -hmm. uh, don't want to take responsibility uh, for on living in estates. Yeah. Because if you live in an estate, there are fees to be paid mm -hmm. because it's not free. Mm -hmm. Because these are facilities that you enjoy. Yeah. One, security. Uh, the public electricity. Uh, if you want a garden being done as they do in Port Harcourt, yeah. watering all those plants, it costs money. Mm -hmm. uh, hiring people to do all that. You know, even uh, with um, um, telephones and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So... Um, in Nigeria, because people have lived in a state for a while, I mean, there are a certain category of people, they choose to be there because they have this comfort. Yes. So they're ready to pay for it. Mm -hmm. um, so in Gambia, it's very difficult to collect fees, mm -hmm. you know, for these services. Yeah. Uh, so we've handed over, you know, some of the estates we've built here to, to the residents. Mm -hmm. But they have had challenges in getting residents to come on board. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't pay for those services, you cannot have it. Mm -hmm. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Because the house is yours mm -hmm. and you are living there now. Mm -hmm. the, the thing is that once you start paying for the service and they are offered, mm -hmm. then value is kept or even value goes up. Yes. And in Nigeria, it is well understood. Mm -hmm. And like most, 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 most places in the world. Mm -hmm. So we are hoping that time will develop when, you know, residents we will, will take the responsibility mm -hmm. of paying for these services yes. to make their their properties, you know, uh, gain value. Mm -hmm. Now, other than Taft City that everyone is excited about and already have seen lots of updates on, what other projects are you working on? Sierra Leone is the one we're working on. For the Gambia, I think Taft City will take some time. Uh, we think Taft City cannot be developed under 10 years. Mm -hmm. But that, that's uh, what time will tell. Mm -hmm. uh, Taft, because the reason being that Taft City is developed around the agricultural value chain. So we're not only looking at housing anymore. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the whole ecosystem in housing. For example, people who are living there. By the time Tough City is ready, we project that there'll be 30,000 people living there. So we are interested to make life easy for the services that they require. Mm -hmm. Basic facilities like food, yeah. you know, things that they consume. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at um, um, going into advanced agriculture, intensive agriculture with greenhouses, growing things that they eat, mm -hmm. um, I think putting up things like poultry, animal husbandry, mm -hmm. fish farming. And, and that, again, generates employment, is good for the economy. Yes. So for the time being, for Gambia, we cannot think anything beyond tough city because 5,000 is a number. Mm -hmm. So that's for that one. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Apart at, at the level of Tough Africa Global, yeah. the next big one really that I am focusing on is pushing Sierra Leone to set it up. Let me also tell you, um, Mariama, I have mm -hmm. so many invitations. For example, yeah. I have a pending invitation into, into Liberia. Okay. I was invited by the, uh, the presidency. Mm -hmm. I have a letter written to me inviting me to visit as a state guest wow. looking at housing. I have this very often. Mm -hmm. But again, as an advice to the young upcoming entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. be very careful about biting what you can chew or yes. what you can consume. Yes. So for me, as a matter of principle, I don't just grab any opportunity. Mm -hmm. I look at my capacity to, to, to see if I can deliver if I step in. So I will be going to Liberia just on a fact-finding mission. Yes. But I cannot start two projects at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, the capacity is not there. Mm -hmm. Guinea is another one. Mm -hmm. you know. So uh, nowadays, I try to probably put in a brand mm -hmm. and work as a consultant, yeah. which is what I'm negotiating in Guinea. Mm -hmm. um, there are a group of developers who wants to work with me, wants to use my brand. Mm -hmm. And we are working on the modalities. Mm -hmm on how we will now come in with, you know, uh, probably supervision and have some input and not physically be on the ground. Yes. These are all opportunities. I do have all these opportunities all the way in Southern Africa. Nice. People come up, but there's a limit to what I can do as an individual. Mm -hmm. There's a limit to what we can do as within our, co our present structure. Mm -hmm. And I would again like to appeal mm -hmm. to all these young ones that there are opportunities 
to join a company like Taf Africa Global, mm -hmm. but not just because you feel that you should be given the opportunity, mm -hmm. but that you are trained and you are competent to handle it at the regional level. Your CSR, Taf Africa Foundation, after the significant book launch and the uh, uh, Tafla graduation in 2022, uh, what plans do you have this year? Well, you know, uh, as I am going into Sierra Leone, uh, I'm looking at setting up also for my CSR. Mm -hmm. uh, one of, one of, one of uh, the uh, initiatives that is very close to my heart amongst the seven or eight initiatives we have under the Taf Africa Foundation mm -hmm. is the Tafla, Taf Leadership Academy. Yes. Because uh, Taf Leadership Academy and what we do is very futuristic. I think it is um, um, an initiative that we must spread across the continent. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that a lot of young people do follow us on my YouTube channel. Um, uh, at one time last year, I had somebody who sent me a very nice mail mm -hmm. from Trinidad or from Tobago, mm -hmm. um, complimenting us, saying that, look, what you launch, what you put up on your, your YouTube channel, I am, now, I am now replicating it in my country nice. by just replaying it to young ones. Yes. Because these are key values of leadership. Mm -hmm. And for me... Um, I was once asked by Wode Meyer in my videos mm -hmm. uh, that if there's one thing I thought needs to be addressed in Africa, what should it be? Mm -hmm. And I just said leadership. And leadership across the board. It's when we say leadership, for me, it's not only political. Mm -hmm. Leadership at the business circle. You know, good leaders will deliver good products. Leadership social, at the social level, religious, mm -hmm. you name it. So I think as Africans, uh, some of the uh, shortcomings we have boils down to good leadership. Mm -hmm. So as you saw in Gambia, mm -hmm. we started uh, with about 50, 50, 50 um, students mm -hmm. in our first cohort. Mm -hmm. And then the second cohort was about 150. Yeah. Then the third came to 350. Mm -hmm. um, uh, this year, we have had about, I think, over 500 applicants. We're screening mm -hmm. them. Um, in Sierra Leone, I would like to start it there immediately. I step in mm -hmm. once the office is set up, mm -hmm. you know. So that's the plan on the leadership on the on the leadership academy, yeah. and then on CSR, there's quite a lot to be done. Mm -hmm. I have had quite a number of people, yeah, who are asking about uh, tough tough con. We haven't done tough con for yeah. a while because of COVID. Mm -hmm. We might do tough con at the end of the year, mm -hmm. uh, plus a lo lot more. But the CSR is very close to my heart. Mm -hmm. And um, any country I step into, I want to put it, you know, parallel to the business I do. Mm -hmm. Now, considering the amount of uh, the majority of women you have working at the tough city, who no longer work as cleaners, you know, but instead they hold um, skilled jobs like painters and block or brick makers, you know, um, is this also going to be considered under the CSR? Oh, yes. Actually, you know, doing, employing ladies in the Gambia, again, my, 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 I have found out that the women are now breaking the barrier. Yes. Um, they are not, they're stepping now into male-dominated jobs. Mm -hmm. If you go to Tough City, you find them there with wheelbarrows, lifting heavy stuff that were really male-dominated. Yes. So um, for us, again, we want the job done. Mm -hmm. You know, so we are happy that the female the, or the ladies are stepping in and doing these jobs. And we encourage them to do so. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's not under our CSR, mm -hmm. uh, but it's value for money. And we want to encourage them more and more and mm -hmm. encourage also the guys to step up. Yes. That there are jobs that are available, mm -hmm. but it comes with knowledge, training, discipline. Of course. Yeah. Yes, women are truly breaking the barriers and I am really proud of the women of Taft City and the amount of work and dedication they put towards uh, their time <clears throat> working on the ground there. Uh, they, don't, they don't define any of the jobs, which is, this is for men, this is for women. They just do whatever they want to do on, and whatever they can, which is just beautiful. Now, before we end this episode, Mr. Njai, uh, kindly tell us during COVID-19 period uh, the difficulties you and your team faced and how you overcome them. And of course, what are your future plans for this year? Well, COVID came as a global um, um, 
issue. It was, it was something that affected everybody in the world. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but also came opportunities. You know, for me as an entrepreneur, wherever there's a challenge, there is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. With COVID, we saw now the virtual reality <laughs> that you no longer need to be physically be on the ground, but virtually you can do a lot of things. Yes. Uh, for example, my PA, who is a lawyer, mm -hmm. you know, so anything legal, mm -hmm. he's based in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And I'm here and I'm also doing Sierra Leone. So everything is done virtually. Mm -hmm. It was when COVID hit that we all started having our meetings online. We never heard of Zoom. Yeah. So again, you cut down on cost, on traveling, on accommodation, and all this. Mm -hmm. so, so this thing happened. So um, we quickly adjusted. We also discovered that we had a social responsibility, mm -hmm. a corporate social responsibility to help the country. And that is how Ndeban Clinic came about. Yes. We are very proud that today, uh, Ndeban Clinic in Bakau mm -hmm. is the main A and E. Mm -hmm. So imagine if we didn't step up and you know put our money into Deban. Mm -hmm. I mean, a life when so many lives have been saved, we have fought partnership with the government mm -hmm. and also UNDP and World Bank. Mm -hmm. So it was a good PPP. So that happened in COVID. Now after COVID, now looking at our plans, you know I'll take life as it comes. Yeah. Uh, physically, I'm not as probably strong as I used to be. <laughs> You're I, still a youth man. <laughs> I, but it's, it's tough. But I am focusing on building capacity. Yeah. I want to support the young ones as much as I can. Mm -hmm. uh, that look, in life in general, there are challenges, and the challenges must be overcome. Mm -hmm. um, again, today, one thing that we use very much in our business is social media. Yeah, what I, what I enjoy from, from social media, as you know, Maria, I'm, I'm very active with social media. Yes. I'm on every social media handle, and for good reasons. Yeah. Um, that's what it has provided for us, where you have a platform that you can promote your business. Mm -hmm. And again, <laughs> social media is like a computer. Mm -hmm. You know, in the computer business, junk in, junk out. Whatever you put in, that's what you get back. Mm -hmm. So we try to utilize it to the best of our ability. We also do realize that you are also out there in the open. That's why it's social. Mm -hmm. So people can get into you. They can say anything they want. But as a matter of strategy and principle, what I don't do, I don't respond to anybody. Because that is somebody's opinion. I don't have a right to your opinion. So say your opinion. I can say that, look, somebody can say, oh, tough is, is jet black. Somebody says, no, no, no. His skin is light skin, his mild skin. <laughs> it's a matter of opinion. Yeah. You know, I'm not there to argue about it. Mm -hmm. But we are very positive about everything that we do. Mm -hmm. And some of them will listen because there's quite some people who are very positive. They come up with ideas. Yeah. And we listen to them. Mm -hmm. We pick it from there. So I just want to use this, um, Mariama, that mm -hmm. anything that we do mm -hmm. at my level personally mm -hmm. or at the corporate level, it's out of good intention. Mm -hmm. But And good intention for this country and the continent and beyond. Yeah. So if we offend anybody, please, we are just human. Yes. We, we, we ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. But everything we do, as I said, I'll repeat again, it's all for good intention. Mm -hmm. And we want to do it as Gambians mm -hmm. and as Africans. Finally, thank you so much for hosting me on your program. <laughs> and I hope program. To, we'll do more. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Njai. This is uh, a great overview of what Tough Africa Global has been doing over the past few years and some of the great projects they've initiated and partnered with as well. Uh, that just showed you that Tough is not working alone. You're working with uh, partners around the sub-region and, of course, within the country as well. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much. My name is Maria Makuli. Until we come your way on the next Tough Hub. <laughs>